uh, part of my talk. Uh, uh, this this these slides are kind of you know recycled from the previous talk given uh, earlier uh, at a, a a series of workshops uh, also organized by Gunther uh, a few months ago on on uh, the ethics of attention and the attention economy, but but. Uh, not all of it. Uh, uh, there are some uh, parts that uh, are new, and uh, I would like to get your feedback on on what I am thinking at the moment. So, uh, conceptualizing attention, and uh, here's a workshop. Uh, so let us get back to the original question of the workshop: How should the concept of attention be conceptualized? so that it can uh, enable a better understanding of potential solutions of the current challenges of the uh, attention economy. So I've been thinking about this and, and uh, it, so I would like to focus on, on the concept of attention. I mean, there are many kinds of attention and, and perhaps uh, some forms of attention uh, should be prioritized. Some forms might not. Uh, it's it's a very much a work in progress at the moment. And uh, in any case, uh, I believe that uh, the the Buddhist concept, you know, so beautifully described by uh, Chu Wei before uh, and and by Peter yesterday, can contribute. Uh, rather significantly to our understanding of, of the kind of attention that uh, should be prioritized uh, in, in, you know, uh, solving the problems that is reflected in this question, you know, the current challenges and, and so on. So uh, here are some of the questions. I'm sorry, I, I have only questions <laughs> On the slide, <laughs> <A real philosopher. laughs> but but I will try to answer them, you know, uh, uh, in the talk. So, is it good or not to have a, a special kind of attention like the Buddhist one? So, uh, Peter has talked about uh, the Buddhist kind of attention, uh, manasikara, manasikara, and. Uh, yoni so manasikara, the kind of you know uh, thinking and and reflecting and trying to find out, trying to understand what is going on and, and so on, which is uh, so important in Buddhist practice. And I think it 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 is good to have such a kind of attention. Um, I'm thinking of uh, other kinds. Uh, if we have too much attention on something, it could be, you know, be, could become a kind of obsession. And 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 uh, I think we think uh, uh, we we don't need that uh, because that's too much. That's too extreme. So um, the the question is how much. And of course, we have this uh, big problem uh, of the. Uh, attention economy and commodification of attention that is uh, investigated very thoroughly in the book by Soshana Zuboff on the age of surveillance and also uh, by Peter's own book uh, that has just come out on uh, Buddhism and uh, information technology. So we are talking about the harmful effects of uh, scattered attention or perhaps too much attention. So uh, that is why I'm I'm thinking at the moment about the kinds of attention that, uh, as I said, uh, should be prioritized because uh, we have scattered attention. You know, uh, one person is uh, having an attention for a few seconds, and then uh, you know uh, the attention is scattered. You know, and diverted. You know, the attention goes somewhere else, or, or not having any attention at all and so on uh, or perhaps too much attention as I said say, it can become like uh, an obsession so another question uh, is what would be the best 
theory or, or what would what would be uh, the most uh, kind of appropriate way of thinking? I think um, we better put it that way uh, to deal with the ethical problems that emerge from you know thinking about attention. And I don't have that theory right now, but I believe that uh, Buddhism can play a significant role because Buddhism has, uh, as, as a whole, uh, has spent a lot of effort in, in thinking about attention and has, has very much to say about the whole business of uh, attention. In, in various forms, and uh, not only Manasikara, we have Sati, we have uh, uh, Sampashanya, and, and all these Sanskrit words, uh, they are very fine uh, distinctions of mental activities that we could uh, uh, lump uh, together as, uh, you know, attention in, in, in a, a, a rough way. So, uh, here, you know, just just uh, putting my thoughts out at the moment, and uh, further questions: uh, How could the ancient traditions, such as Buddhism, help with the problem of attention deficit? Uh, in the previous talk that I told you about, yeah, in the series of talks organized also by Gunther a few months ago. Uh, I mentioned uh, the psychological problem of attention deficit. So the focus in my talk is not as much on on the the kind of uh, social problem of uh, or, or the economic problem of the attention economy uh, as much as on on the more individual aspect of. Uh, what happens when an individual uh, kind of uh, suffers from uh, these problems such as attention deficit and so on. Uh, does technology or could technology, for example, mindfulness apps that, uh, you know, there are so many of them nowadays, uh, could they help with the problem? I think they can uh, to a certain extent. And uh, a Jue being uh, both, uh, you know, a, an ordained nun and a computer scientist. You now we had uh, a lot of discussion on on this topic, and and you know I learned a lot from from my conversation with her. Uh, at first, I thought I I, I was kind of critical uh, about these apps. Uh, you know, as I uh, previously said in my previous talk, but uh, right now I, I kind of have changed my mind. And and uh, for those who have uh, no other means of uh, getting toward uh, the practice or the cultivation of mindfulness and so on, in order to, to solve the problem that is reflected in the first question, uh, above. I think these apps can be helpful. And uh, the general attitude of Buddhism toward technology is not that, you know, it, it's not that it is uh, certainly or, or wholly opposed to, to, uh, to technology, but as long as technology in general can be applied in such a way that it can advance uh, the goal of the practice, then why not, right? And and if we think of uh, what happened in the past, uh, technologies certainly were used in SS uh, aids to Buddhist practice. We we uh, think of uh, the gongs and the, the uh, drums uh, that some monks use to help you know focus their attention. Uh, by creating rhythms, you know, uh, or uh, the prayer wheel, you know, in, in Tibetan Buddhism, it's a form of technology, and it kind of 
focuses the attention on on the action of uh, spinning and 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 of course uh, the the belief is that it uh, radiates the prayers to the whole cosmos and, and and so on. So, how much can we rely on technology to solve our personal problems? And uh, 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 technology here can include you know pharmaceutical technology, but but um, uh, uh, that that's a whole field of of this uh, uh, discussion. However, I would like to focus on uh, the, the more kind of uh, individual side of uh, problems uh, related to attention, such as lack of attention or uh, not having enough attention, or uh, this is a Buddhist term, cultivating bare attention, which is um, very important in in uh, Buddhist practice and in, uh, I believe, in, in uh, uh, solving uh, the, the, these personal problems in general. So perhaps I'm thinking that we also need to distinguish between uh, the good kind and the bad kind of attention, or, or should we uh, you know, still uh, much of a, a thought in progress at the moment? So uh, we have philosophical analysis of the concept of attention. And I have come across, you know, uh, throughout my my research for the talk, uh, Simone Wills, a French philosopher, uh, who has written quite a bit about attention and very significantly. And I'm going to have a longer quote later, but uh, here is uh, some of her. Uh, uh, talk or, or some of her writings on attention. She says attention consists of suspending our thought, uh, leaving it detached, empty and ready to be penetrated by the object, uh, which I find really, really interesting because it uh, gets us away from the perhaps the usual understanding of attention as kind of a grasping and getting hold of something and not letting go of something you are attending to something meaning you 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 know focus your mind on uh, as if you know you are uh, tying a cord uh, between your mind and and whatever object that is your attention but that that is not what will is saying and um, there's a lot uh, I think uh, to be compared uh, between Will's thinking on attention here and, and the Buddhist understanding of attention. So uh, the, uh, the, the goal is perhaps that, uh, that good life can be uh, made possible through attention. That's the uh, Buddhist uh, way of, of, of saying in any case. So. Uh, in the time that is left uh, here is uh, a comparison. On the left is the quote from Simone Weil that we have seen earlier. And on the right is uh, uh, kind of a general Buddhist understanding of the concept of bare attention. Bare attention meaning you are not attending to anything in particular, but uh, this happens during a meditation session where you are attending, you, your mind is being very active, but it's not focusing on any particular thought, right? Uh, so I said here, I, I try to put it uh, in, in short uh, uh, as uh, attending to one's goings on inside, you know, uh, but, but not following anything without following any strain of thought. So uh here is a quote from uh, wheel uh, I, I put the the uh, source here uh attention consists of suspending our thought uh, this is where the the uh, original quote that i said earlier come from leaving it detached empty and ready to be penetrated by the object it means holding in our minds which in within reach of this thought, but on a lower level and not in contact with it. The diverse knowledge that we have acquired, which 
we are forced to make use of. Our thoughts should be in relation to our particular and already formulated thoughts as a man on a mountain who, as he looks forward, sees also below him without actually looking at them. A great many forests and plains. Above all, our thoughts, our thoughts should be empty, waiting, not seeking anything, but ready to receive in its naked truth. Uh, some some words uh, are missing there. But but you see the uh, general point. It's not just to let go of anything that would not be any uh, kind of, you know, any attention at all. But uh, on the other hand, it's not, uh, you know, grasping, as I said earlier. So it's a kind of a, a, a going in between. Uh, you are looking on the mountain and uh, looking uh, to the uh, white scenery below you. You're not focusing on any particular uh, aspect of, of your uh, vision field. But on the other hand, uh, you are kind of uh, letting go and, and let uh, the object, you know, the the uh, vista of the forests and and mountains that you know that you see come toward you. You, know, uh, you are in a way uh, passive in it, but but not totally passive. So that's the point, as I believe you know we were saying. How, uh, and and I would like to compare this to. Uh, the Buddhist uh, way of talking about attention, and this is a very standard teaching in the Theravada tradition of Buddhism. Uh, a, a very famous Burmese monk, Yanaponika Thera, uh, uh, his famous work on the power of mindfulness. And he says, I'm going to read just, just uh, this is uh, the last slide I have. Uh, he says, by bare attention, we understand the clear and single-minded awareness of what actually happens to us and in us at the successive moments of perception. It is called bare. It is called bare because it attends to the bare facts of a perception without reacting to them by deed, speech, or mental comment. So, so uh, can be compared to when she says, you know, um, being penetrated by the object, right? Ordinarily, that purely receptive state of mind is, as we said, just a very brief phase of the thought process of which one is often scarcely aware. But in the methodical development of mindfulness aimed at the unfolding of its latent powers, bare attention is sustained for as long a time as one's strength of concentration permits. Bare attention then becomes the key to the meditative practice of Satipatthana, which is uh, one of the uh, most important practices in Theravada Buddhism. Uh, sati, uh, of course, means mindfulness in this book, uh, opening the door to the mind's mastery and final liberation. So, uh, yeah, uh, my, my answer, so this is the very last slide. Uh, I try to give an answer to Gunther's uh, original question as follows. Uh, attention should be conceptualized in such a way proposed in either wheel or in Buddhism or both, uh, which is the kind of attention that is free and unforced. It is free because it is not directed at anything and it is unforced, you know, not like, you know, grasping because it is bare and is completely natural. This should be coupled with the, you know, attempt uh, that uh, we have talked in this workshop about uh, the need to regulate the attention economy in general. So I, I stop here. Thank you very much for, for your attention. Thank you. Okay, we're going to turn in a moment to uh, to a wider discussion, but maybe first just any questions of clarification, more details. 
Yeah, thank you very much. Just a quick clarificatory question. Uh, you were making a difference between good and bad attention uh, in the slides, and I was wondering what what would be an example of bad attention? Is it just related to the object, paying attention to the wrong object, or is it a you know the wrong way of paying attention to something? Yeah, yeah. Uh, my thinking at the moment is that uh, if we have too much attention on anything, it it kind of, uh, you know, whenever we have too much of anything, it uh, it won't be good in in in, in, in general. Uh, it becomes more like, uh, for example, um, my son, uh, he's very much very much into computer games. Uh, right now he's a computer engineer, uh, but but uh, when he was young, when he was like you know six or seven, he spent like almost all his waking hours in front of the computer, and that's a kind of attention. And perhaps I don't know, but perhaps uh, it could be the, uh, if if he does not. Uh, uh, Find a way uh, to 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 create some kind of positive aspect out of that um, you know very strong attention that he was having. It could become uh, because uh, in Thailand uh, uh, we we also have problems about uh, uh, oh, these are psychological problems of kids like you know. Uh, they they uh, spend too much time and and uh, they they don't navigate uh, their ways uh, 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 in in such a way that they can become uh, uh, positive. So so uh, that's what I'm thinking at the moment. That could be the wrong kind. Uh, maybe I don't know whether I put it. Uh, maybe. It's not the attention itself, but but something that that accompanies the attention itself, perhaps. All right. At this point, I think perhaps we'll um, make the transition to the to the discussion engaging with both Sarge and UA's um, uh, interventions, their their framing of this 